Okay guys, so uh, welcome to the orders page. We're going to start at the uh, top here with uh, search orders. Um, and just to give you an idea, uh, anything on this orders page uh, that's not filtered is searchable. Literally everything. Uh, SKU, ASIN, uh, notes, uh, source URL, name, address of the buyer, literally anything that you see on the screen, including like purchase cost, um, or what, what the buyer paid, all of it is searchable within this uh, within this box over here. So um, just to give you an idea real quickly of how how well it works, uh, we'll just grab one of the SKUs from here, drop it into here, um, and you'll see that it's filtered for uh, this time and date range, the last 30 days, it tells you how many sales there were, and then all of these numbers at the top will adjust according to that. Uh, while we're on the topic of uh, this uh, reporting bar over here, uh, you see the total number of orders, um, total number of units, gross sales, Amazon fee associated, uh, purchase costs, your net profit across the board, your net margin, uh, which is uh, basically uh, your uh, sales minus the Amazon fees minus your uh, purchase costs uh, will give you uh, your net profit, right? And then your net margin will be the net profit over the gross uh, sales. Um, you'll have uh, the number of refunds in this time period and then uh, your refund rate across the board. Uh, again, like we said, uh, you can use uh, the search at the top of the screen to filter these numbers out and get a clearer idea on each individual SKU. So again, if I drop a different SKU into here um, and this is last 30 days um, and then I switch it to 60 days, you're going to get an idea of uh, how many orders, units, and all the rest of the stats across the board. Uh, you know, the information on this particular SKU, see how it's performing. Um, and then you can export all that information uh, through a CSV. Uh, the exports are only available to the admin role. Uh, all other roles and user permissions will not have an export button here. And we'll also not see this bar at the top here. So you can protect some of your information. If you wanted to get a good idea of like some of your stats uh, by supplier, um, you just go through and click on the supplier and everything will adjust accordingly. Again, supplier and SKU or supplier and any other unique identifier that's put up into the top uh, screen will factor into uh, the equation and will adjust all of these numbers for you. So you get like really, really great reporting out of the system. Uh, the other filter that you're going to want to use um, is basically uh, the date range um, and uh, the different order statuses. So uh, the different order statuses that uh, we have within the system are pending. This is the status that uh, all orders come into the system as. Uh, we have ordered, uh, which is the status that you place the order in after uh, after you place, you know, the, item, the order is actually placed. Um, everything else will happen automatically and all these other status uh, statuses will be uh, adjusted by you uh, besides for uh, shipped status. Uh, orders get placed into shipped status automatically uh, once the uh, once the tracking number gets pulled in from your Gmail um, and it gets uh, automatically sent to Amazon we will flip it to shipped status for you. Um, so if you wanted to uh, work on just pending orders uh, you would place an order as follows. Uh, so pending orders uh, would come through you would see uh, what they were associated with here just gives you a quick, like pretty clear picture to make sure that you are in fact selling the same item that you are uh, buying. Uh, this will give you the date and time of uh, that the order came through. Uh, your order ID from Amazon. Over here you could click through this and open up the order within Amazon. Uh, you may want to simultaneously click through this link uh, so that you have the source URL so you could place the order at the source. Um, this is where you would set your statuses. Pending is where it comes in as. Again, all you need to do is place the order and then change it into ordered status. The supplier order ID gets populated automatically. In this case, uh, in this account, some, uh, some of the VAs are using this uh, placeholder for the time being to mention that it was out of stock uh, or um, you know, to, to place notes for themselves, but there is actually a designated notes section uh, within the each each and every order that uh, we urge you to use. Uh, purchase cost uh, will be filled in automatically after you change this over to ordered. Um, tracking number will also be pulled in automatically from your email address. Uh, and this is the latest ship date. 
Uh, latest ship date is used uh, primarily so that you know uh, when you need to get the order out by. So um, suspense items would probably be uh, if you are filtering for ordered status um, and then you sort by the latest ship date, you'll get an idea of which orders need to go out by when, right? So you, you wanna get, you're gonna wanna keep a close eye on these and see why they haven't actually shipped yet, right? If they haven't shipped yet and they don't have a tracking number, you're probably gonna wanna go chase down the supplier for the tracking number. If they do have a tracking number and the latest ship date is tomorrow, at 2.59 EST or 12 AM PST, um, then you're maybe going to want to confirm it manually. You'll sacrifice a little bit on your uh, valid tracking rate, VTR, but you'll save your late shipment rate, which is actually a lot more important. The SKU over here uh, is, is uh, directly linked to your products page, and if you click on it, um, you'll get directly to your product page uh, with that product actually open. Um, so that you can do a deeper analysis of it, etc. Uh, but coming back to the SKU, effectively, uh, we, we do give you an idea if it is a bundle here so that you can see, okay, so I need to order this SKU um, and I need to order it one time uh, by four, one times four, right, for this one. So when I open up the source URL, it'll be quantity one for the order, but it's a four pack, so I have to order it four times. Um, conversely, uh, we have a order here with a quantity of three. Um, so we would order this product uh, three times and the bundle here is two. So we would order six of this product. Uh, so that's a really good indication. And this is a one-to-one -one basis. So like one, the uh, customer ordered one and, uh, and the product is only a one pack. So uh, we're gonna order one. Uh, we offer you an easy way to copy the address uh, from within the system just by clicking on this little box over here. Uh, but uh, I urge you uh, to use the integration with uh, Spot and Paste because it makes it super simple to place the orders. Um, in one click, you'll both copy uh, the, sort, uh, the, the ship to information and you will open up the source URL. So again, I'll show you how it goes. I'm gonna click this. Uh, it's going to copy uh, the information for that order and uh, I'll be ready to add this item to the cart directly um, and then paste the information uh, for the order. So like super, super, super quick. Okay, so uh, basically we pasted it in one click um, and then we're going to save it, place the order, and then we're back to the orders page. Uh, and of course, you know, this is in order status already, but we would move it from pending to order. All of this other information is gonna come into the system automatically. The order ID, supplier order ID, the purchase cost, uh, and then eventually the tracking. Uh, the tracking will uh, basically uh, hit a few APIs to see what the status of it is. As you can see, these are uh, in pre-transit uh, pre status. Uh, once it starts moving, we're gonna, we're gonna confirm the shipment. And that'll be the end of that. Uh, keep going through here. You have notes. You can place any notes that you possibly like on here. Uh, this is a test note. Um, this order was canceled. Place it somewhere else. And then I'll put uh, my name, Jordan. Okay, so if I save that note, um, then it just exists here and you can continue to use it and your team, uh, you know, will time, be time stamped and date stamped and uh, it'll say ex actually who placed that note uh, by the user role. Uh, also, uh, as I said before, everything is searchable. So um, even down to uh, the names in the notes or any portion of a note that you, uh, that you took before will be searchable uh, within the notes and uh, you could see that right here um, when we filter for order, this is the note that uh, that we talked about here. Um, and actually, uh, this second order, this guy's name is Jordan. Um, so, great. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about here was that you can actually rearrange these columns in any way, shape, or form that makes sense for you. Uh, this is the layout that I've chosen. It stays static on the computer that you uh, that you place, uh, that you're you know using the, the application on. Uh, so once you change it once uh, on that computer, it'll stay uh, frozen that way uh, for a while. Um, and then um, the last thing to note is um, order placed by. You'll know who placed the order uh, from, from pending to order. 
Um, so that'll give you a good indication as to, uh, you know, if there's a mistake or whatever, you need to know who, who placed it so you can reach out to the, uh, to the virtual assistant. If an order is canceled uh, or requested to be canceled by the, uh, by the client, uh, you're going to want to put it into a canceled status here. Um, and then you're also going to want to click through the order ID and cancel it over at Amazon with the reason code of uh, buy or requested cancellation. If you have to cancel an order because you can't find it, it's out of stock or uh, whatever it may be, and you can't find the product of, uh, either, you would put it into that cancel status and then go cancel the order on your own. Just canceling it here does not cancel it within uh, Amazon's marketplace. Uh, request return is a status that you would put the, uh, the, the order into if, uh, if the client has requested a return from you. Um, and it basically sits in that status until somebody, uh, re you know, so the supplier reaches out to you and, uh, and tells you that they have a refund for you. Um, and so once you uh, have the refund uh, from the client, you're going to take it out of this request return status um, and move it into the refunded status. In the refunded status, uh, you're going to be asked to, uh, the particulars of the refund. So how much you refunded the client. So in this case, let's say it was uh, the full what the buyer paid, or maybe you take a 10% restocking fee, um, and then uh, you ha also have to put in what the supplier refunded you so that we can calculate um, what the uh, net profit on the, on the order was uh, in total and at the end. Um, so if the supplier refunded you your entire purchase cost, uh, then we'll basically uh, hit save here. And we'll see that on this order, you lost uh, only a dollar and thirty-three cents on that whole return. Uh, everything else would be variable depending on how much you refunded the client and how much the client refunded you.